Why did God create a hell if he is a God of love? Now that is a question many people ask today and so few people can answer them. And it is an important question because that question can be a stumbling block for someone to learn Christ better. And so I'm going to answer this question today from a biblical perspective. So read this all with me. Let's go to Matthew 25 verse 41. Then he will say to those on his left, depart from me, you cursed into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. So who are those on his left? It's all those who did not want to accept that Jesus carried the punishment for their sins on the cross. They didn't want to accept that. They wanted to continue to live in sin, but when they die, there's still a requirement of the law. So punishment needs to be dealt, and that is eternal hell. These are the people who want to continue to lie, steal, cheat, murder, rape, and bribe, thinking they can continue to do what they want without consequences. And these are also mostly the same people who do not like the idea of a hell prepared for all those who lived in disobedience. You know, it's similar to criminals today. They who break the law and get caught and then they are angry because they're going to go to prison. But what do they think is going to happen? Now, when it comes to our sin, the only difference is Jesus says, I'll take their punishment in their place if they accept to turn from their evil ways. Now, when we look at verse 41, it says that a hell is prepared for the devil, Satan, Lucifer, and also his fallen angels. So those people who go to hell, you won't be alone. You'll be there with demons. And there are already fallen angels chained up in eternal darkness. Listen to this. Jude says, Now I want to remind you, although you once fully knew it, that Jesus, who saved the people out of the land of Egypt, afterward destroyed those who did not believe, and the angels who did not stay within their own position of authority, but left their proper dwelling. He has kept in eternal chains, under gloomy darkness, until the judgment of the great day. Just as Sodom and Gomorrah and the surrounding cities, which likewise indulged in sexual immorality and pursued unnatural desire, serve as an example by undergoing a punishment of eternal fire. Now, some people ask, well, why is hell still there if God is a God of love? Well, I can ask you a similar question. Why is heaven there? Because we sure do not deserve heaven. None of us do. Have you been watching the news lately? And somehow we all pretend to believe this big lie, thinking we are great, while deep down we know how terrible we as humans really are. We treat each other like rubbish. Millions of kids and women are being trafficked and raped every day. Corruption in governments and businesses just to get more money and then to spend it on sinful pleasures getting drunk every weekend and some beating their wives, not taking care of their children. There is a sickness in humans. Yes, God is love. We only understand what love is because of God. But you see, that's not all God is. He is also righteous and He is also holy. And so if He is truly righteous more than the judges we have in this world, in the court systems, if he is truly righteous, then he will punish unrighteousness. So he will punish evil people. Asking why is there a hell is the same as asking why are there prisons in this world? True righteousness requires punishment for unrighteousness. There's consequences. We all live in this world. We make decisions because God gave us a free determining will because he doesn't want to force us to do good. But he says, please do good and choose me. <laughs> He's our creator and he loves us, right? But the only way for us to have that freedom 
for righteousness to be there, to be to, for fairness, I would say, for a lack of a better word. He gives us that free will because he wants us to choose the light over the darkness. Unfortunately, a lot of people don't. They choose to do evil. But you can't just go around and do what you want, thinking there's no consequences. If someone breaks the law and rapes your daughter, there needs to be righteousness and he needs to be punished. If a criminal did the crime, the judge of a court will deal out the punishment if the judge is truly righteous. You see, God is the judge of the whole world, and He will judge those who do not turn from their wicked ways and accept His sacrifice on the cross for their sin. Their punishment that they should have received, that all went on Jesus. And if they do not accept that, they will still need to go and carry out their punishment, which is eternal death. Hell. Acts 17 verse 30. The times of ignorance God overlooked, but now He commands all people everywhere to repent, because He has fixed a day on which He will judge the world in righteousness by a man whom He has appointed. And of this He has given assurance to all by raising Him from the dead. Thanks to Jesus who gave us a way out. He came into this world. Remember, He was always there from the beginning. He came into our world, our dimension, to live a perfect life and die for us on the cross, taking our punishment for sin on Himself so that we might be saved. You see, God is so righteous, so holy, that if you disobey one of His laws, you've disobeyed all of them, the whole law, because you have sinned. And because He is light, there is no darkness in Him, He is so holy, it means that the punishment for sin then is death. James 2 verse 10, For whoever keeps the whole law but fails in one point has become guilty of all of it. So hell is created for the punishment, eternal punishment, for all unrighteousness, for sin, because that is the righteous requirement. So God is righteous, yes. And now, because He is also love, He gave us a way out when He did not need to. And that way that He gave us still fits under the righteous requirement of the law, where He Himself, who is perfect, came into the world, lived as a human, went through all the trials and tribulations we did, but without sin. And then He took all the wrath of God all his wrath for sin on himself, and he died. The righteous requirement, death. Romans 3 verse 23 says, For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Let me explain it this way. So there's a problem because we cannot save ourselves because we have all sinned against God's law, and the punishment for that is eternal death, right? So, some might say, well, what about my good deeds? My good deeds probably outweighs my bad deeds. Well, think this through first. If you get caught stealing and you stand before the judge in a court and say, well, I know I'm guilty because you've got the proof, but what about all the good things I did? The judge will say, it does not matter because it does not take away the fact that you stole. The judge will sentence you to prison if the judge is truly a righteous judge. You did the crime, so you need to do the time. So if we cannot save ourselves, we've got a big problem. Yes, we do, all of us. We need someone who went through all the temptations, trials and tribulations that we went through in this life, but who did not sin. And that person needs to come and say, I'll take his punishment. I'll take her punishment on myself. But who will do that? Because the punishment is death. Jesus. Jesus came and did it. Romans 7 verse 24. Wretched man that I am, who will deliver me from this body of death? Thanks be to God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Jesus came 
and did it. And Ephesians 2 verse 8 says, For by grace you have been saved, through faith. And this is not your own doing. It is the gift of God, not a result of works, so that no one may boast. If you do not know what Jesus had to endure, suffer, on the way to the cross and at the cross, then you need to watch The Passion of Christ, just so you remind yourself of what He went through for us while He did nothing wrong. And this redemption plan is the only one that could work. God is all-knowing. He is perfect. He is righteous. He is holy. And there's a righteous requirement. And the only thing that could work was the sacrifice of Jesus. John 3 verse 16, For God so loved the world that He gave His only Son, that whoever believes in Him should not perish, but have eternal life. And 2 Corinthians 5 verse 21 says, For our sake He made Him to be sin, who knew no sin, so that in Him we might become the righteousness of God. And Peter 3 verse 18 says, For Christ also suffered once for sins, the righteous for the unrighteous, that He might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the Spirit. You see, Jesus gave Himself up as a sacrifice for sins, for all those who accept His sacrifice for sin, who repent of their sins, turn away from their sins, and accept Jesus Christ and receive the Holy Spirit. They become new creations in Christ. And you see, this is also why He gave us, why He gave you, your own free determining will, because you can choose. He wants you to choose Him, the light over the darkness. But if you choose the darkness, it means that that is what you chose, and that is what you will receive, eternal darkness. You see, it is people who choose to go away from God do not want to accept him. It is people who choose hell. 2 Thessalonians 1 verse 9. They will suffer the punishment of eternal destruction, away from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his might. And you know, people out there, evil people like Hitler, they need to know that there's consequences to their evil sin. They're only alive because God gives them grace. Just the fact that they are breathing is because God allows it. And He gives that to all humans, good and bad, to make a decision. It is only a short time of grace because He wants those who do evil to turn from their evil ways, from their own self-determining will. He gives all of us time to decide. And that's the main reason why we are all here in this short temporary world. We are but a vapor. The one day we're here, the next we are gone. So let me ask you, is your name written in the book of life? Revelation 20 verse 15. And if anyone's name was not found written in the book of life, he was thrown into the lake of fire. You know, there are many lies about hell, and I think it's because preachers do not preach about hell enough because for some reason they are scared. But we should obey Christ. If you truly love people, you will tell them the, the truth in love to warn them. Jesus talked about hell a lot. <laughs> Before my dad died, who lived the way he preached, he was a preacher in South Africa. He lived the way he preached and when he came to his deathbed because of cancer, the one day his eyes opened up and he looked at me while I was sitting next to him on the bed and he said, we need to warn people about the reality of hell because they do not know what is waiting for them if they die, if they do not accept him. And so the reason we preach about hell is not because 
oh, it's hellfire and we just want to be judgmental, is because we love people. We don't want them to reject Jesus, but to understand who He is. Because not only do you receive eternal life, but you receive all spiritual blessings while you live in this temporary world. And peace and joy in Christ. Matthew 13 verse 49 says, So it will be at the end of the age. The angels will come out and separate the evil from the righteous and throw them into the fiery furnace. In that place, there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. If you want to understand what hell is really like, then please watch this video here. I'll see you there. Remember to subscribe and never forget that God loves you. That's why you live in a time of grace. And I love you too. Bye.